I first made this 10 years ago to try to impress a date, and I don't remember the date, but I do remember the recipe, and I've been making it ever since. Let's spend time with Marco, but the food is the star, so it's probably worth sharing. Hello, I'm Marco, and welcome to my home kitchen. Today, I want to show you how to make roasted butternut squash and onions with a garlicky tahini dressing, toasted walnuts, and za'atar. It is originally from the book Jerusalem by Yota Motolenghi and Sami Tamimi. One of my top five recipes of all time. This makes a amazing main course, or it's also a perfect side dish for any of the fall and winter gatherings that are coming up. I'm going to walk you through my variation because I've made some changes to it over the years based on what I like. But if you want to see their original recipe, it's actually published for free on the Bon Appetit website. But I highly recommend you get the cookbook because it has some just stellar recipes in it, and I really love that one. The ingredients divide into a few components here. The first is the roasted vegetables. You need one large butternut squash, which is about a kilogram, two medium red onions, which is about 700 grams, four tablespoons of olive oil, and some salt. For the dressing, you need about 85 grams of light tahini, about 30 grams of lemon juice, one clove of garlic, do not go crazy on the garlic, it is enough, and 30 grams of water. You might need more or less water or lemon juice, depending on your tahini, and some salt. For the topping, you need 45 grams of walnuts, pistachios, almonds. The original recipe calls for pine nuts, but pine nuts are like $20. So they're going to be delicious, and they will certainly impress your date. But if you're making this, like use like a dollar of walnuts. To toast the walnuts, you need about a tablespoon of olive oil. You're also going to use some olive oil to bloom the spices. Zaltar is both a spice blend and an herb, so it gets confusing what you should buy. In this recipe, you're using the spice blend. So that's made from one tablespoon of sesame seeds, one teaspoon of dried sumac, and one tablespoon of zaatar the herb. If you can't find zaatar the herb, you can easily replace it with uh, thyme or with oregano. It's going to have a similar but not exact flavor, and that's totally okay. You can also find premixed spice blends at the store. This one is made with thyme and oregano. Last, you'll put uh, one tablespoon of chopped parsley. The onions and squash are going to be roasted over high heat in the oven. So before getting started, you want to preheat your oven to 475. If your squash has lived a pampered life and has very soft and tender skin, you can totally leave the skin on. But my experience is that most squash gets bullied by its siblings on the vine, and because of that, it has a very thick skin. So I always peel the squash for this recipe. I find if you leave the skin on, it can get really leathery, especially at the high cooking temperatures. So first thing, grab your vegetable peeler and peel. Usually I'll peel around the wider base of the squash first, and then it's really easy to go all the way up to the top of the squash. Once you've peeled your squash, it's time to slice it. Start by cutting the top off, and then this root at the bottom. The squash pieces should be around two and a half inches long. So if you have a longer or squatter squash, you're going to cut this slightly differently. In my case, I'm going to cut it in thirds. So I'm going to cut through the base, and then cut the top in half. If you missed any peel, now's your chance. Then you want to scoop out the seeds. Grab a spoon and run it around in a circular motion inside of the squash. If you want to save your squash seeds, you can toast them just like pumpkin seeds and they are super delicious. Now you want to cut the squash into three quarter inch wide pieces. My, my preferred way of doing that is to cut each of these pieces in half, place them cut side down, then cut each half into four to eight pieces, depending on how large your piece of squash is. So you'll see from the very top of the squash, I cut that into four pieces. For the bottom of the squash, that went into six. You want them all to be a relatively even size so that they cook at the same rate. If any of them are too big, just cut them in half. I'm gonna put these in a large bowl while I cut the onions. These onions are gonna make me cry. Cut, <laughs> cut, 
cut the bottom and the top off the onion. Then cut it in half from top to bottom. Peel off the skin. The onion skin will also get really leathery when it cooks. Using a piece of squash as reference, I'm going to cut my onion halves into four pieces each. If you have larger or smaller onions, don't use the number I'm using, match the size of your squash. So I'm just gonna cut these into wedges and throw those in. They're going to fall apart, so don't baby them, but if they stay together, that's nice. That's all of the chopping and most of the crying done. There might be more crying depending on how your dates go. Now you, whew, the onions. Now you want to add three tablespoons of olive oil. I'm doing this in a mixing bowl because if you do it right on the baking sheet, all of the oil will stick to the baking sheet. And because it's cooking at such a high temperature, it's going to adhere to the surface. You're gonna be scrubbing that baking sheet for days. If you do it in a bowl, it's going to mostly stick to the vegetables and you'll have an easier time washing the baking sheet. Also add a few pinches of salt here. Um, you're going to adjust the seasoning later. This is really to help bring out the moisture in the cooking process. Toss this all together. If you lose any squash, just try to get it back, but know that some relationships are just meant to end. Now pour this out onto your baking sheet and try to space these out into a relatively even layer. If your baking sheet looks really crowded like this, use two baking sheets instead. You want to make sure there's a good amount of space between all the vegetables so that they have room to crisp up inside of the oven. Right before you put this in the oven, add a couple of ice cubes. I have four little ones here. Adding ice cubes as you roast vegetables is a great trick to speed up how quickly and evenly they're going to cook. The steam increases how fast the heat gets transported into the center of the vegetables, which means they're going to cook so much more evenly than if you did this without the ice cubes. You can totally leave the ice cubes out. They're optional, but they make a big difference. So now this goes into a preheated oven at 475 for 30 to 40 minutes until the squash is really caramelized and brown on the outside. While the vegetables roast, you can put together the dressing. Add your tahini to a bowl, then grate in one clove of garlic. Add in the water, juice your lemons, and add about half the lemon juice to begin with. Then add one or two pinches of salt to get things started. Grab a whisk and start mixing it together. Tahini does this magical thing with liquid where it becomes opaque and thick. I don't know what the science is behind it, but it's really cool to watch. So here you want to check the sauce for a few things. Texture wise, you're looking for it to have the texture of honey. This is a little bit thick right now, so I'm going to add a bit more liquid but I don't know if that should be water or lemon juice until I taste it. So, what's it like? <laughs> it's very good and it's very garlicky, probably more garlic than you want on a first date, but super delicious. It's pretty tahini forward, so I'm gonna add more lemon juice to cut through the tahini just a little bit. Now, with the added lemon juice, Mm, that's perfect. Has more of a tangy brightness to it that I like, and still quite a bit of heat from the garlic. It's super tasty. This can set aside until everything is ready to assemble. To toast the nuts, you want to add about a tablespoon of olive oil into a cold pan, and then add 45 grams of nuts. Swirl them around in the oil. If you're using something large like walnuts or almonds, this will take about eight to 10 minutes on medium heat to get them toasted all the way through. If you're using pine nuts or pistachios, it's only gonna take three minutes or so. Especially if you're using pine nuts, you want to keep an eye on things and make sure they don't burn because they're very expensive. Like a decade ago, probably when I first made this recipe, 
At the grocery store, they put a sticker on the pine nuts box that said, warning, these nuts are very expensive in all caps. That's how expensive they are, and inflation has only made things worse. You'll see that some of these are getting some nice deep golden brown around the edges, and the whole house smells like toasted walnuts. It's actually a really awesome smell. Great way to make your house smell for a date. Probably not to sell your house, but um, good in this instance. So these are done and going into a bowl, and this is going back on the heat. Now I'm going to add another tablespoon of olive oil. And you want to heat that until it is shimmering. That's going to tell you that it is very hot. Then put in your sesame seeds. And just give those a second to start toasting. Once your sesame seeds start taking on a bit of color, throw in your za'atar, throw in your sumac. Give it a very quick stir. and immediately remove it from the heat and put it into a bowl that should be over here, but I forgot to put over here. So let's see what happens. In this tiny, tiny bowl. Oh no. If you're using an already mixed za'atar blend, the sesame seeds are likely already toasted. So you can just toss it in the oil and take it off the heat immediately. By putting the spices in the hot oil, it's going to awaken them and give them more life and more flavor through the rest of the dish, which you really need because of the intensity of the tahini in the dressing. I lied to you earlier when I said we were done chopping. There's still parsley. Do this while you have all your cutting board stuff out. And that's the parsley. The squash is out of the oven. I got the tahini out of my mustache and it's time to put this together. Something else that's bad for dates is having food in your beard. You'll see that the squash has some of these uh, really dark charred areas, some really golden areas. From the outside, it looks perfect, but what you want to do is grab a paring knife and poke inside the thickest piece of squash and check that the paring knife goes in and out super easily. If that's the case, squash is super cooked, ready to eat. You'll also see that the onion took on quite a bit more color than the squash. That's normal, but what you want to watch for in the oven is any parts that are getting really dark and charred like this. If your onions start cooking faster than the squash, take out the whole tray, take some of the onions out, and then put the tray back in the oven. To serve this, you wanna get a large bowl or a large serving platter and grab your handy fish spatula and start moving things over. You want to try to create a distribution between the onions and the squash inside of your serving container. If you have any pieces of charred onion skin, just remove those. Once you've arranged this how you like, grab your dressing and try to artfully drizzle it on. Then add your nuts. your za'atar mix, then your parsley, add some fresh black pepper. And if you're feeling fancy, you can put some flaky salt. This is uh, Malden flaky salt. I would upgrade the salt, not the pine nuts. If you're not feeling fancy, you can use regular salt. You can see it's completely visually stunning, but the whole house smells incredible and I can't wait to dig into this. So how does it taste? It's just so good every time I make it. 
You get that deep earthiness of the roasted squash, the sweetness of the onions. There's just a kick from the dressing between the tahini, the garlic, and the lemon. The nuts are great. The za'atar is great. It's just such a perfect dish. You should totally make this for a date that you're trying to impress, but you can also make this for yourself. You can make this as a Thanksgiving side. It is so, so, so good. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I'll be posting seasonal vegetable forward dishes through the rest of the year. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Oh, it's probably worth sharing. Okay, I'm gonna tell you how to say it in Arabic. You're not gonna be able to pronounce it if you don't speak Arabic, but that's okay. I'll then tell you how to say it when you don't speak Arabic. So in Arabic, it's called zatar.